Hello and welcome to another video of mine, it's Kamal Double Eight, and this is another Chelsea transfer news daily video for you guys where I'll keep you guys up to date with all the latest Chelsea news in the past 24 hours. Today is a double upload this evening, you will be getting my preview for the Atletico vs Chelsea game, the second leg um, of the tie which will obviously take place tomorrow evening at Stamford Bridge which there will be my first ever watch along on this channel, I'm so excited for that so make sure you tune in for that one, it's going to be my first watch along because there's a lot to cover and hopefully, fingers crossed, on my first watch along, we can get through to the quarterfinals, which will be a magnificent achievement. However, I've got some news updates for you guys in regards to Rüdiger, a potential contract extension, Jan Oblak rumour talks, and I'm going to be discussing the latest news on Dybala links to Chelsea. Could Chelsea potentially go in this summer and splash 55 to 60 million euros on the Argentinian superstar Juventus. We'll have to wait and see, but before I do get into all of that, make sure you smash like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and comment down below your thoughts and opinions on each topic that I do speak about. Now, starting off with the really good contract extension talks, I'll leave the juicy bits for a bit later, but in regards to current affairs of Rudiger, it looks like that he will be signing an extension. Um, he actually has a very limited amount of time left on his current deal at Chelsea. But according to the Daily Mail Online, they're claiming that Chelsea will aim to start contract talks with Antonio Rudiger before the Euro 2020 to avoid allowing the defender to enter the final year of his deal at Stamford Bridge with Thomas Tuchel keen to keep him. Chelsea's plan was to discuss Antonio Rudiger's future after this summer's European Championships, but they will aim to resume talks over a new deal for Rudiger to avoid more doubt over his future heading into the tournament and the start of next season. Now, for me, this is absolutely mega news. I think that if you cast your minds back to potentially even you know two months ago, everyone and their cat and dog, including myself and every single Chelsea fan in this fan base, would have said Rudiger's gone by the summer. He's gone. He's not in Lampard's plan. He's not performing at a high level. He's mistake prone. He's not good enough for Chelsea. Lampard doesn't rate him. Blah, blah, blah. He's gone. And including myself, we all thought that, that was the case. He was so close to leaving at the end of last summer. He didn't join Tottenham in respect to Chelsea fans. Credit to him. And it was looking highly likely that this summer this guy was going to go because he's only got a year and a half left in his current deal. And hence why Chelsea don't want him to run down on this deal. And, you know, he is a first teamer. He's been playing week in, week out ever since Thomas Tuchel has been appointed our manager. And look how the tables have turned. Look how the tables have turned, unfortunately, for him. And Rudiger looks like one of the first names on that team sheet. He's been absolutely phenomenal. He's been superb in that team. He's been marshalling that back three. Um, I'm not sure if that's the formation that Thomas Tuchel will be using in the long term. I, I believe that he will switch to a 4 3 3. But right now, he's been tremendous in that left centre back role. He's made it his own. He's cemented himself in that position, playing alongside Christian Santiago Silva, Aspilagueta. He's been absolutely superb, even pushing Kurt Zuma out of the team completely. So, again, a, a new contract is completely deserved, in my personal opinion. If Thomas Tuchel rates him, listen, for me, it's a case of if I'm part of that board, that part of the hierarchy, Thomas, whatever you want, we'll do for you. You want this player, we'll try our best to sign him. You want to keep this player, sure, we'll offer him a new contract. You don't want this player, cool, we'll put him on the transfer list. Because it's all about backing your manager. Because if you if you back your manager, give him the tools, the finances, resources, giving him that time and in finances to, to really change the Chelsea team and put it into his image, you know, implement his philosophy and tactics, we will go very far. I believe Chelsea will return to glory days and become an elite football club once again with Thomas Tuchel at the helm. He's a world-class tactician and a world-class manager. We will win Premier League and Champions League with his guidance if he is given the time and resources. And so, as I said, if I'm part of the hierarchy, Tuchel, what do you want, mate? Yeah? You want a centre-back? Cool, we'll sign him for you. You want really good to stay? Cool, we'll offer him a contract extension. Simple as that. And again, it looks like before the Euro Championships, which are obviously taking place this summer, he will be signing an extension. Now, but what do you guys think? Of course, two months ago, we would have said sell, sell, sell. For me, I think he's deserved. His performances have shown that he does deserve a new contract. And for me, I think he should stay, especially the fact that Thomas Tuchel actually wants to keep him. So for me, it's a case of giving the new contract because he completely deserves it. And he looks like he's going to be part of the first team, or if not, at least the first team, he will be a regular starter for Chelsea. Now, moving on to some juicy news, and it is in regards to Paolo Dybala. I never thought I'd be speaking about this guy for a long time. According to France Football, a French outlet, a French publication, they're stating that Chelsea and Tottenham would be willing to spend between 50 and 55 million euros to sign Juventus star Paolo Dybala. Now, Dybala was very close to signing for either Tottenham or Manchester United, I believe about 18 months ago. He was very close to signing for both of them and um, it, it collapsed. United, he wasn't satisfied with the wages 
at the time. He wasn't satisfied with the wages that uh, United were offering. He didn't actually want to leave Juventus at the time when Sarri first joined. And if anything, he didn't go because United weren't going to give him extortionate wages. He said to his agent, his client and, and Manchester United themselves that if they weren't going to give him extortionate wages, he would not want to move to Manchester United. Making him a bit of a mercenary, he never even went there. He said he Juventus and Tottenham is a similar situation. Now with Chelsea, could he be interested? We'll have to wait and see. Now, it's a bit confusing because if we are going to... It's really hard to say will Dybala fit into the system because he plays like a Hakim Ziyech. He's not an out-and-out -out winger. He hasn't got a cemented position. He's a very versatile player. He can play all across the front three. He's a bit like Havertz in a sense. He's not rapid or pacey. He's got some pace, but he's not a rapid, skillful winger. He's more of a number 10. I think a number 10 is the best position where he's able to play make. He's able to create. He's fantastic long shots. He's basically Hakim Ziyech, but on another level compared to like this guy. is consistent. Dybala is world class. For me, he's a superstar name. The problem is, is it depends what formation or what style Thomas Tuchel wants to go for because I know for a fact that he doesn't want to use three at the back long term. I think that it's actually going to be, in fact, the 4 3 3. Now, what type of 4 3 3? Is it going to be a 4 3 3 with an inverted winger as a front three? Or is it going to be 4 3 3 with, you know, out and out wingers like proper, skillful, pacey, creative wingers, i.e., your Hudson Doys, your Pulisic, because they complement that system? And since Pulisic is in Thomas Tuchel's long term plans, does that suggest we're going to be using a 4 3 3 with out and out wingers? And if that's the case, our baller don't fit into the system. So it's really confusing because we don't know the system Thomas Tuchel is going to deploy. But his actual player, the attributes that he has, he's a world class player. For me, you'd have to make room for him, whether that's putting him as a number 10. He's simply world class. I think that this season hasn't worked out at Juventus. I think that's mainly down to Andre Pirlo. I think he's not good enough as a manager. He hasn't even done his coaching badges. So the fact that he's got the Juventus job is. It's blasphemy. But um, again, Dybala struggled under his reign. And I think he would thrive at Chelsea. It depends on the system, as I should keep stressing, what Thomas could go for. But for the price range, you know, don't forget Dybala's 27. He's in his prime. Just do believe class. that. It's a question of, for me, it's a bit of a luxury signing. If you're signing Dybala, Hakim Ziyech and Tammy both have to go. Simple as that. And we're trying to target Haaland. So do we need this many attackers? I don't think we do. Dybala would be more of a luxury signing. We have other priorities we have to strengthen, i.e. a world-class striker like Erling Haaland a world-class centre-back, potentially even a left-back, or even a midfielder. So there's so many other positions. I think Dybala would be last on the list of strength, and this is more of a luxury signing, in my personal opinion. But listen, if we sign Dybala, I am not complaining, because this guy is world-class. He's a top, top player, and I'd love him at Chelsea. But what do you guys think? Leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Now, let's get into the final story, and it is in regards to Jan Oblak. Now, again, according to Sport Witness, they're saying that Jan Oblak's name is on the agenda of Chelsea and Manchester United. An impressive display for Atletico Madrid at Stamford Bridge may put him back in the spotlight for the near future. Now, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a backstory. Uh, when we signed Kepa and we lost Courtois to Real Madrid, Chelsea really wanted Oblak at the time, and he had a release clause around £89, £87 million. Pounds. Um, Chelsea were reluctant to activate it because it was extortion amounts of goalkeeper. But ironically, we spent you know £71 million on Kepa. And they thought that Kepa would be a better long-term investment. And um, how that's packed by bloody hell. But, you know, it just goes to show that if you're trying to be stingy, sometimes it it bites you. It bites you badly because we tried to save and penny pin £16 million that we now have a long-term, you know, big financial disaster. Where if we splash an extra £16 million, we would have secured Jan Oblak, who, in my personal opinion, is the best goalkeeper in the world. He simply is, and I think that he's rotting away Atletico. I think that he deserves a better club like a Chelsea, for example. And it's a case of our Chelsea willing to activate his release cause. And with recent performances for Mendy, do we even need him? I don't think we do. I think that if Mendy keeps up these performances, if he remains consistent, I think that we need to give him next season. You know, I know he's not the best on his feet, but his shot stopping abilities are world class, in my personal opinion. He's entering his prime years. He's tall. He's a very commanding keeper. He claims crosses. He gives that back four, that back line, good confidence. Um, I think you need to give Eduard Mendy an opportunity. And if you sign Jan Oblak, you have to start Oblak. So that means Mendy's going to be, you know, and allocated to the bench. And that's not fair on him because he's put in some good performances. So for me, it's a case of giving Eduard Mendy a chance. And I think that Jan Oblak is unrealistic for starters. I mean, as I said, there's other positions we need to strengthen. Striker, centre-back, midfield, potentially even a full-back. Because Ben Chihuahua is a bit, is a bit sus. So it's a case of... Again, it's another luxury signing. In £120 million, you know, Chelsea are rich, but we're not 
We're not that crazy rich and of course you have to bear in mind financial fair play regulations so I don't see this as being realistic whatsoever. I think it's a bit of a nothing story but I'll throw it out there because that has been the rumour of today. But what do you guys think? Leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this news, then leave a video to smash like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification and comment down below your thoughts and opinions. And don't forget to check out my preview for the Atletico Chelsea game this evening. And there will be a watch along tomorrow, which I'm very, very excited for. And I'll see all of you guys for my next video. Peace.